Hello and welcome back to This or That, presented by Verizon. Quite beautiful, if I don't say so myself. James, we're also welcoming back from Feels Iceland. Feels good to be home. Feels good to be home, Kobe. It's good <laughs> to see your face. I'm so excited. Uh, our week one was amazing, so I'm sure that we have some banger slides. Let's get right to them. Number one. Ooh. More impressive 3-0 weekend. I'm actually going to go with Immortals. Okay? No! I, I was going to do the same. Because <laughs> I'm like, I know the fan favorite, TSM. Everybody's going to be all for TSM. Yeah. But as far as impressive to me, I was un under the camp. I have to take responsibility. I actually ranked Immortals ninth place. Oh. And they came out of the gates. Zerse especially is so much better than he was in spring. His rumble from season seven, bringing it back. Amazing games. And then their bottom lane as well, smashing a legit 2v8 game in, in their last one. Destiny hitting the hooks. Uh, Raze as well. Right. Hard carrying. He set a record for the biggest gold lead at 15 that, in the LCS. Look, okay, so yes, exactly. You've already hit on a few points here. Number one, a new LCS record was set. <laughs> I think the expectation point is huge and I'm mm -hmm. glad that you're willing to you know cop to the role you played in uh, in creating that narrative <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. that they would then go and destroy but absolutely I think everyone assumed that based on TSM in spring if they continue to improve keeping that group of five together Burek's in more time as a coach and gelling that they'll continue to contend as a top team immortals we did not have this expectation and they blew any expectation we did have out of the water yeah honestly Immortals have never had a 3-0 weekend before. That's gotta be it. Next Boom. slide, what do we got? More, okay, so now we're going to more disappointing. Is it the <laughs> one-two start from Cloud9 or the one-two start from Team Liquid? I am gonna go Team Liquid here, mm. actually, and I think I'm gonna give Cloud9 a little bit of that credit that we've been giving them on the broadcast for the <laughs> MSI hangover, the right? Yeah, okay, okay. yeah, the excuse. The they excuse. submitted their excuses it's, ahead it's, of time. It's, I don't even know if it's one I generally subscribe to, but I'm gonna take other people at their word that there is one. Wow. Uh, uh, and so I would say that it's more disappointing for Team Liquid to go one and two, uh, given the amount of time they've had, but also kind of in the face of the roster change that they made. You know, I would expect that, especially, no, gi given that it's been said that this change has been in the works for quite some time and that it wasn't a flippant decision, I gotta wonder why was it made if the record isn't going the direction they would expect it to go? I wanna see wins go up on the board. I wanna see dominant teams continue to be dominant as we look towards summer split and qualifying towards world. So I would call that more disappointing. I would say that the more memeable uh, one to start is for sure the Cloud9 one, just okay. because of how hilariously bad the second game for them was <laughs> with Perks Renekton flashing in to kill the ward, you know, not respecting any sort of enemy vision, yep. all this stuff like culminating in the peak just Oh my God, is it a doomsday for Cloud9? So I'm gonna go with Cloud9. I also do just think it's funny that uh, Cloud9, upon returning, they're like, all right, we got this big bombshell. We're benching Sven. We're, we're bringing up King. And then, you know, one game in, Team Liquid's like, hmm, we're gonna one up you. <laughs> Next slide, though, let's get it. More OP, mm. Gwen or, or Perks? perks. <laughs> Diego comes in at the last uh, moment. And for sure, my answer is Gwen. Uh, it has been Gwen from start to finish. Um, Gwen actually does have a lot more options into range champions. Uh, Diego, less oppressive lane. Yep. Yes, he can snowball like crazy. Yes, it is a reset champion, um, but it's so much more difficult to actually successfully get there and successfully use it mm. than Gwen. Gwen Gwen right now has so many uh, strengths, you know, straight from level one, being able to E onto people, extra range, 40% uh, attack speed with your E, so many matchups, she can actually just charge you down level one and get these advantages. But then she also has the W for later on for team fight yep. to be able to avoid so many things. And it's not super complicated. All you have to remember is to try and get the middle of your scissors for the true damage and passive proccing. Yeah. And you can move that by using your E. So uh, I, got, I gotta go, Gwen. There's just so many good things. Yeah, that little circle might be the most frustrating ability in League of Legends at the moment for me right now on Gwen. But I'm gonna try and argue for for Viego here. Okay, okay. Um, specifically because uh, I'm looking at a couple of the ways that the Gwen lane was attacked. And actually, Team Liquid, one of the teams on our previous slide, was one of the teams willing to give it up and find an answer to it in terms of attention to the top lane. And so while, yes, I think maybe the champion itself in isolation without any effect from elsewhere might be more overpowered, I wonder if it's the case that in pro play, 
right? Teams can figure out how to attack it and keep it down. Whereas Viego, at a certain point, either coming from the jungle or coming from the mid lane, I, I agree with you, like, uh -huh. reset City. We saw what Power of Evil did with it on day one and made it look absolutely disgusting. And any champion that can become Gwen becomes the most OP champion I, in the game. I Kobe. was waiting for that. Yeah. I was waiting for the part of the <laughs> argument where, well, what if Diego just kills Gwen and then becomes Gwen? <laughs> I'm glad I could give it to you. All right, okay. what do you got for us next? Uh, more valuable top laner, uh, Impact or Licorice? Ooh. Oh, Lord. Valuable top laner. I'm going to go with Impact. You, you already know that you have to pay more for Impact. <laughs> That's uh, true. Because there was this whole thing well, about... Well, wait, but so that, if we're doing an actual valuation <laughs> then, are we comparing it to their cost? I was just making a off the top of the head <laughs> joke okay. right there because yeah. you know for sure Impact costs more. Yeah. Uh, so if the teams are valuing him more, Ooh. the GMs are valuing him more, um, honestly, Licorice did have a bit of a dip, you know? FlyQuest Spring was definitely disappointing yeah. uh, for me, just overall for the team, because I really had high hopes for them. Um, you know, his Gwen was exceptional, yep. and I'd like to see that when there is a new champion, even if it's considered strong, to be able to put the time in and play it correctly. Um, not all the Gwens, to your earlier reference, right. were as successful, so... Uh, I, and his he, Wukong was solid as well, and I'm glad to see another person picking up Wukong. Yeah. Shout but out I'm to going Impact moot. for sure. Yeah, <laughs> I'm also going with Impact. At the end of the day, when I look at questions like this, I think about who would I want to, you know, bring on to a team, and I think the stability that Impact has been able to bring to teams throughout his entire career is kind of second to none. His ability to play things all the way from carry to weak side uh, is exceptional. I'm thinking... Nar is still, a, you know, a viable pick in the meta. I want him on that kind of a champion. So impact all the, the way. The OG tilt proof. There all it right, is. what do we got next? Would you rather have a Karma mid or a Lulu top? Um, if it's uh, Abadage, I want Karma mid. Uh, hundred percent of the time. I was Let's gonna go. say. So if I look at this last weekend's games, then the obvious answer would rather be the Karma because True. the Lulu got that got swapped into top. Cloud9 then swapped their lane, sent perks up there, and built up a four stack wave and dove it and yep. actually made it look useless. But I think that the Lulu top there from Team Liquid versus Cloud9 was poorly used. Didn't also have the best team comp for it. You know, not a hyper carry okay. as real. It, 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 there's some something there, but it's, it's definitely not the optimal usage. Uh, and there are a lot of matchups where if you're the one switching the Lulu top into it, if you're choosing this for the yeah. top lane, Lulu can both have a good lane for you and buff up a hyper carry later on. So even though the games this last weekend would probably say Karma, and I agree with you, I'm gonna still go Lulu top. Okay, I'm gonna stick with Karma in part. It's a results-based analysis from this weekend. Fair enough. But also, also, I like the lane swap point, but I think what's interesting is I think it would be much harder to deal with a Karma in either mid or top. And so I know we're looking at Karma mid, but in a situation where you're forced to swap lanes, I think Karma would arguably be stronger in, in both, right? Versus maybe Lulu struggling a bit more against mid lane champions, as we saw. All right, next one, what do we got? Well, 100 Thieves, Take down TSM on Friday. Okay, this is a big, big matchup. Straight up prediction. Whew, straight up prediction. <laughs> I gotta think, oh my goodness. Snap judgment is no. I think that uh, TSM looked entirely too, I don't know, too clean might be. <laughs> it might be a bit of a stretch. But they looked fairly clean. And I think their ability to scale and win late game team fights is how this is going to end up playing out. Particularly in the case where 100 Thieves might continue to play uh, a Karma in the mid lane and not necessarily play something that's oppressive like a Tristana and gonna be able to end the game early. And I think if you don't end the game early against TSM, you're gonna struggle a bit more. It's so interesting to me because I think that for TSM, Sword Art deserves a lot of credit mm -hmm. as a well as Spica, uh, you know, for, for changing some of the things about TSM that they were a little bit lacking in in spring. You know, both of them very proactive, huge engages from them. Uh, speak especially controlling so many uh, of these lane matchups that actually do benefit so much from, from jungle intervention. So I, I was pretty high on the TSM train, but I also just love 100 Thieves when they got flamed and everyone's like, why are you sticking Abadaga on Karma mid? You're stupid. It's after working. the first game, after the loss. Yeah. Then, then they're like, yeah, well, <clears throat> let me show you why. And they do it again and yep. they win. And then everyone's like, oh, just kidding. As I said, I agree with this uh, you know, big brain take on the meta. I, I just love that story, you know, when, when they get to do stuff like that. And it's nice to see 100 Thieves with a direction again yes. after the changes they made. So I, I'm gonna predict for them then, 
Wow. So we can have it interesting, James. Okay. I just want to check. You didn't like predict the other way on the dive this morning because I know you've been, you've been liable a... to do that in the past, Kobe, is hedge your bets across multiple shows. I might have done it if we had the prediction, but we didn't, okay. we didn't, actually, do, Fair we didn't actually have that prediction. So <laughs> I'm going 100 Thieves. Honestly, I, I am a believer right now in the supportive mid with Carrie Jungle. Maybe they do a different look like Lulu plus Kindred yeah. saw in Academy. So. Okay. All right. Split decision on that one. We got one more slide for you all today. Let's take a look. <laughs> what? Just that is... the other thing. What is the short form version of a blaze olive? Is it a blaze, a blaze. olive or is it a blolive? There's. <laughs> I'm kind of. I don't know. I wanted to see how it felt coming out of my lips, and a blolive is kind of. I might be a fan of that one. I when I saw it before reading it, I wasn't. But now I'm. I'm warming. I'm warming <laughs> up to a blolive. <laughs> You know what? You're selling on me just by the fact that it, that it's so memeable, but it does feel like another player. So That's true. for serious answer, you know, when people were at, posing this question earlier, I was like, you are just a hard troll if you're saying Olive. What? That, that sounds ridiculous. But for so shortening, you think a blaze is better? Yes, 100%. No. A thousand percent. Inaccurate. I'll tell you why. A because, million. Because grammar matters. And Olive is the noun in this situation. Then I'm going and to Olive. <laughs> I'd rather have a, an a blolive than an olive. You know, you don't refer to like a blaze Kobe, you know, that's the descriptor. We wouldn't just call you a blaze then. A blaze? That's cool. a blaze. That a lot of questions are going to come out if all we're doing is yelling. The short form. The state of. And a blaze <laughs> sounds so much cooler no. than olive. I so what up, look, olive? Look, I'm glad that I recruited you to the Ablolive camp because I feel like that's where we both ended up at the I'm, end of all of this. I'm going to say a blaze, dude. Oh, How screw are you saying, that. A blaze is cool, OK? All right, well then I'm going with olives. And also weighing in on that discussion on the show this week, olives are incredible. All olives yeah. are incredible. Unless you're so. only eating canned olives, okay? Kalamata olives, green olives, you know, get the real flavor. Yeah. Don't don't come don't on. come at me with canned olives. All righty. All right. <laughs> I'm working a blolive into the broadcast this week. Honestly, so am I. <laughs> All right. Thank you for joining us. This is our first week back in the studio in over a year and a half. Feels so good. Feels great. See you next week. You know what? Let's do it again. I'll see you on Friday, dude. <laughs> right back here.